In an important question, could you fall victim to a sophisticated bank scam that begins with a simple text message? The government says scams of all kinds are soaring. Americans reported losing nearly $8.8 billion to fraud last year. That's up 30% from the year before. Our consumer investigative correspondent, Anna Warner, shows us how scammers stole a staggering sum from one woman's bank account. Anna, good morning. This was a lot of money. Yeah, good morning. And you know, we've all gotten those texts from our bank saying, did you make a particular purchase? Well, next time you'll probably want to read it again and think before you respond. And the woman you're about to meet can tell you why. It's got a lot of cheese on it. Deborah Moss has spent more than a decade running her small catering business. A couple more minutes. In 2021, she says she'd finally saved enough money to slow down and move to rural Guerneville, California. I'm not a young person anymore. I really was relying on just kind of a comfortable life at my age. But a few weeks after moving in, she says she got a text saying her bank, Chase, wanted to know if she'd approved a $35 debit card charge from another state. So basically, it's one of those fraud texts. That's right. Did you approve this transaction? Yeah, that's all it was. Just a minor irritant in my day. And of course, I said, no, I don't approve of it. Then the phone rang, showing Chase Bank as the caller, she says. And on the other end? Hello, ma'am. This is Miss Barbara from Chase ATM. I'd like to know if it's okay if I give you a new card. And I said yes. A new debit card. But she says the woman told her before she could issue it, she'd need to verify Moss's identity by sending her a text message and having her read the numbers in the message back to her over the phone. And I would just repeat those numbers to her. And she'd say, that's great. Thank you so much, Miss Moss. Her new card was supposed to arrive in one to two days, but Moss says the next day Ms. Barbara called, saying FedEx was having trouble locating her home, something Moss says wasn't surprising to her since she'd just moved. Over the next week, Ms. Barbara called several times, Moss says, each time saying there was a problem with delivery of the card and each time asking Moss to verify her identity by reading back the numbers from those text messages. Moss finally decided to go to the nearest bank branch 30 minutes from her home. And it was here, she says, a supervisor told her. He looks up at me and says, oh no, Deborah, this has been a very active card. As a matter of fact, all the money that you had in there is gone and you actually owe Chase $895. That's how I was told that somebody had taken all my money. Nearly $160,000 stolen. It's a lot of money. It took me 12 years to, to get that money, and that was my life savings. It turns out those text messages Moss received, they were real texts sent from Chase Bank, a security measure known as two-factor authentication, used to verify, among other things, wire transfers. But in this case, the scammers tricked Moss into giving them those numbers, allowing them to evade security and wire thousands of dollars from Moss's account to their own. Six wire transfers in amounts as high as almost $48,000 in a single week. I didn't even know what a wire transfer was. I've never done a wire transfer in my whole life. Chase told Moss to file a police report, then a claim with the bank, which she did. But five weeks later, Chase denied her claim and blamed her, writing, During our review, we found you did not take the appropriate steps to protect your account from theft or unauthorized use. Bank officials said they would not reimburse her account. My world fell apart. My whole world fell apart. In response to our questions, J.P. Morgan Chase told us in a statement, unfortunately, when scammers tricked Ms. Moss into sharing her personal confidential information, her account was compromised. But this former federal regulator says of the bank... Any way you look at it, they failed. They failed her. David Weber teaches forensic accounting at Salisbury University in Maryland and is a certified fraud examiner. Is that true? The bank could have required her to come in and sign the wire form in person. They left everything for her to be on risk. And now they're saying they bear no responsibility. What's more, he says, those two-factor text message authentication systems aren't strong enough. This is happening hundreds and thousands of times a day in the United States using the exact same methods here. The two-factor authentication is not strong enough to protect this customer. 
J.P. Morgan Chase told us each year they invest hundreds of millions of dollars in authentication, risk models, technology, and associate client education to make it harder for scammers to trick customers. But Moss says... You think of your bank as being someplace that you put your money so that it's safe, but it's not safe. It needs to change. Now, Chase Bank told us they tried to contact Moss at the time with voicemails and emails. She said she never got any of those. But some tips from Chase Bank about protecting yourself here. Do not give out your ATM pin, your passcodes to anybody. And please don't click on suspicious links in emails or texts. You want to avoid that, guys. Oh, gosh. Uh, Anna, I mean, the, the key word there is suspicious links. How do you know if a link is suspicious? How do our viewers know? Because the, the scammers got into the account because of that initial click on a link. That's right. what led them in. How, do, how, do, how was that prevented? I think you have to really look at these text messages very carefully. Um, I've gotten them, and they look really real. If you have any question at all whether this is actually coming from the bank, um, and even if you don't, frankly, what you can do is look at the back of your card. The number is on the back of your card. Right. Or go to the website right. and look for the number. Call that number, then ask. Say, hey, I'm, I've got this advice. text, but I'm not really sure if it's from you. Can you tell me if it is or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good advice there. Wow, that's just an awful story. It's scary. She's right. You do put your money in the bank because you think it's going to be safer than under the bed, and in this case, doesn't appear that it was. Yeah. All right, Anna, thank you very much. Right.